All right, I'm going to say welcome to Shea Spiritual Insights. Again, I just started recording. I thought I had done so before, but I had a choice whether I was going to record on the computer or someplace else. And I did an opening statement about the incoming energies, and they are indeed um, flowing in. It's beautiful, high-frequency golden energies. It's a double hump, which we're already experiencing the first part of it coming in, or from your perspective, probably coming in. It's going to hit an intensity, lull a little bit. And I think and it looks like right now, November, the next wave is going to be coming in. Again, it's a wonderful thing, but it also accelerates the rate at which we release old patterns, beliefs, and baggage, which means that we can sometimes experience some of the old patterns as they're being released. That's all right, not to fret, just to flow with it and just know that what we're experiencing is being released and what's coming in is the higher patterns that we're all seeking. So with that, um, are there any questions or any thoughts? Anyone want to start? I can start with Paula if you wish. Go ahead and unmute. Thank you so much. I actually do have a question. I have two if that's all right. My first yes. one is, um, I had an odd thing of fear just jump up and stare me right in the face about two days ago and I knew what it was it was the the um, fear that's going on right now on our planet and I've been fairly good at not letting that come into my field mm -hmm. um, but it was just interesting that it really just showed up and I worked through it but I'm just wondering if there was something there I didn't see that I need to work you know clear on fear and the other one is about the timeline um, I've heard in a couple different uh, talks that people aren't seeing anything past 2045, and I'm just wondering if there's a reason for that, or if that's even true from what you see. Well, let's sort of take your first uh, question first. It is true because there is an, a lot of fear out there in the world, and it's just permeating the environment, and it's really important that we stay in our, you know, our bubbles and, and keep ourselves grounded and do those things we're guided to do, stay connected. Um, and you're sensing some of that. And what's also happening as we're letting go of things, if there was fear associated with those patterns that are being released, we might, if, if it doesn't just get released as we've talked about before, but get some of it, much of it gets released, but some of it gets processed through our energy system, gets into our energy field, so to speak, we can sense it too. And it's just basically our own personal counterpart to a minor counterpart or smaller counterpart to what's happening out there. And that's what happened with you. You had some stuff come up actually from, um, I think this is a common theme. This is a medieval life that I don't know if we've talked about. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the one. And, and you're releasing it. And so it, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, everyone has their focus uh, going on to your second question. And some people they're focused on, uh, future events, unfoldments, timelines. My guidance is to stay, you know, what, what's brought to my attention and then share that. Um, there can be some things coming up in 2045, but what I've noticed right now is something I saw back in the early, late 1900, 1999, 2000, early thousands, 2000s, which is we have all these incoming energies and we have all these different, and I'm going to call them soul group paths because we each have individual, have individual life paths when we slow down here. Um, and there's different options we can take. And we do, if we decide to do it this way, uh, we our learning unfolds in one, one pattern. If we decide to go over in this direction, things unfold in a different pattern. We learn similar things. We just may learn them in a different order. Similarly, collectively, all our individual life paths feed into the soul group, and the soul group has different options that are available. Right now, I want to say the word that I keep, they keep giving to me is divergent. There's many divergent paths that are possible, and some are more possible than others. Uh, I'm going to say that the light, as the light comes in, and as the darker forces that are out there, the people that are the, uh, in, you know, holding on to the negative patterns, um, you know, they're in fear, so they're, they're pushing the, th the soul group one way, but the light is so incredibly powerful. It's so much more. 
you know, the, some say it's 10 times, 100 times. It's just incredibly powerful. And it's moving the soul group in, into these other paths that are possible. What I'm seeing right now in regards to 2045, they're just showing it to me, that there are some possibilities of things coming up, but we can't know right yet which way it's going to go. I think the soul group, um, we really are moving into the light. What the efforts that are being made by, uh, what is it you say, the, the, negative, the negative forces or those that are in fear um, just aren't going to work. They're just, the, they don't have the traction to make it last. But there are some possibilities of things coming up. I don't know. I think it's right now it's to be aware of, but not to lock into because uh, I'm seeing that things can go many different ways depending on how the unfoldment well, you know, individually and then collectively as millions of people make their individual decisions and are guided, that guides the soul group into the direction it's going. And it's more positive, I want to tell you right now, than what it looks. It's um, things are much um, brighter than, than I'm, I'm talking, as I talk to people out there and interact in the world, I'm really re realizing the effect it's having on people who aren't necessarily spiritually connected and it's much brighter than a lot of people realize. So that's going to be my answer. Uh, if you have more questions, I'll answer that if you have a follow on. Oh, no, that's thank you. That was how I felt. I was feeling it also. So I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. You're welcome. And I want you to know, oh, okay, I mean, back up. Your high self wants you to know and relayed to me that she wants me to relay that to you that um, you're more connected at the intuitive level, then your conscious mind is giving you credit for it. And it's not something that we want to let our ego get involved with, but it's something that you should be aware of to, to know that you are connected and, and to trust the higher guidance as it comes in for yourself, as you have been doing, um, because um, it's part of what your growth pattern that you're in right now. You're welcome. Thank you for asking the questions. All right. Um, wow, we have a group here. Oh my goodness gracious. So we have Lisa and Aaron and... Oh, come on, it's coming to me. Oh, come on. Um, I'm losing it this second. Go ahead, you can embarrass me and tell me. Esther. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> do we have any comments and questions from you from anyone there please share oh i just wanted to add something to paula's question about people not seeing beyond uh what was it 2044 45 whatever that was mm -hmm. so what i've heard is that in 30 years we go into singularity where the technology and everything is advancing us so far that all this stuff starts to go off the chart. So it's in a land where there's no more predictability, like that kind of ends. And so they don't, they can't really gauge where we're gonna be or what's gonna happen because just stuff, stuff is going so fast that you hit that, what they call singularity. And then that's uncharted territory. No, nobody can determine at that point. I'm so glad you said it that way. That's what they were talking about with the paths. There's just so many ways it can go. You cannot know which way and, and how things are going to bring other things are going to come in that are going to cause greater unfoldment and, 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 and growth. So I agree. It's just like with the, the Mayan calendar, the 2012, that wasn't the end of the world. That was just the end of that era, that, end, that, that, that calendar. And you're right. We're going to move into... There are so many probabilities at this point, it's, it's not, cannot be known which way the soul group is going to choose and which way that the unfoldment is going to go. But it is for us to remain aware of these things. Let it come in, let it, as we're guided, if we're guided to make use of the information, do, but not to lock into it, um, it which is kind of what the low self always you know, likes to do. So thank you for sharing that. That's very well said. Thanks. Does do you, anyone else, Aaron, have anything? <laughs> like a question? But you can have a question. You can have a comment. 
whatever, sharing with the group because others benefit when we share, when each of us shares. So if you have something, fine. If not, that's fine too. Um, I don't know if I have a comment, but I'm curious about like, I guess where I'm at and what my next steps will be. You're in the middle of it right now. And that's from your high self. You're in the process of it. And that was why I couldn't say more in the last email. Okay. Was where things, there comes point, and, and I'm, I've even have it in my own life right now in, 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 in a way. They brought together, they being our higher guidance, all they put into place, all these different elements in our lives, physically, energetically, spiritually, and then pathwise, the things we can see and the things we don't see. Because there's those things that we are not to know because that's part of our learning. And once we're at that point, it's then for us to, to just stay centered, follow our higher guidance and make the best choices we can and let the unfoldment happen. That is indeed happening. It's happening in my life right now. And that is indeed what's happening with you. But it's so important that you're going through this right now. This has been, this process you're going through has not been possible in the past. And we've talked about this in, in previous conversations and emails. For all these lifetimes, you've wanted to do things and you've made progress in all these lifetimes, but you finally hit a point where in this lifetime, things have culminated together to bring together all the elements necessary for the growth that, that you're in right now. And as challenging and let's say even frustrating as it can be for you. And, and I know that the, the challenges are really there um, this growth is going is serving you well now, even if it doesn't look like it, and it's going to in the future. So, I'm going to share for, as one kindred spirit going through it as you are, but in a different way. But as you are, um, this is an important period, and I will tell you that I have no at least of two other people off the cuff that have a similar situation going on in their life. It just seems to be a point with this culminating energy that's happening with the soul group, each of us in our individual paths is making use of this energy for our own spiritual growth to propel it to the next level up that wouldn't be possible in other times, in other eras. So that's my long answer to your short question. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. If Without further ado, Pat, do you have anything to share or do you have any question to ask or both? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd love to hear from you. Well, I thought it was interesting when Paula asked the question about the fear because I had um, a neighbor and somebody else asking me, especially the neighbor, about what's going on with all the sadness. And she had three things in one day, like, first of all, she started feeling it. Mm -hmm. Second of all, she was in the grocery store and something happened to where she saw that someone in the store was really, really sad. Then mm -hmm. she's driving home and there's a lady walking down the highway in tears. And so I, I kind of, you know, explained to her some of what, you know, you've been saying mm -hmm. to us this evening and as well as myself, um, uh, I told her too, I said, you know, um, I've been rather melancholy, like it comes and it goes and boy, yeah. it, it almost like, like it used to be, I could go in the greenhouse and start messing around in there and I'd be just with the elementals and just having a great time. Mm -hmm. And now today I was out there working and it was like, I had that melancholy stuff come in as well. I'm just going to keep going. And um, interesting um, experiences yesterday because everything, we had to go to Whitefish and Kalispell, every single thing fell into place. It was the most incredibly um, musical day that I've ever had. Wow. And yet, and I never felt like junk, but yet my intuitive said after, you know, after, well, after after I'd been in Costco by myself, while well, John was at the eye doctor, my intuitive said, take your pendulum, your obsidian pendulum out and cleanse yourself. And that bugger was just going around and around and really had a lot of cleansing. And then 
I had more, you know, more things we did in the later afternoon. And then when I got home and I cleansed myself, it was off the charts. And of course I cleansed John too. So with that, there is a lot going on. Um, I can see it and feel it. And I, I was really excited to have such a, an awesome up day yesterday. And let's see. Well, since we're asking about what steps we're taking if you see anything i've never asked this on on this show um <laughs> if you see anything you think i would like to know or that would help me in the pr present time i would be delighted to hear it and and i love all you guys and i'm so glad you're all on <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing. And, and it, I want to just talk to that real quick again. I know we've been talking about it because of the intensity of the incoming energies and the fact that it's causing people, you know, be, those who are flowing with the higher energies, it's just, it's like that surfer analogy. And I'm not going to keep repeating it. So we all know what that is where we're riding the, the crest of the wave. But for those who are holding on in fear, this is a tumultuous time. This is really, really um really intense experiences and it's bringing out the the the, the low self the, the fear and the sadness and the melancholy and those kinds of things so we're if we're not paying attention in those moments where our mind wanders we can be open to feeling some of that and it's why it's important to stay in our bubble but at the same time in our own lives as this stuff comes up you, we're going to have be releasing a lot of that and if it is being released you know a lot of it just falls away and we don't even know it left some of it for whatever reason, some aspect or a lower aspect of our low self, some facet of us holds on to it for whatever reason, the child self, it may get processed through and that's fine, but just know that all is well. Um, and that you, each of us is, as we stay centered, we are the light, anchoring the light, being the light, and that light goes out to other people and it can help them without their even knowing it. Um, so I'm glad you shared that. You're right. That's a pretty intense period. And that's why it's more important than ever that we stay connected to our light. So again, you, you don't put a bushel basket over a lamp. You, you let it go and glow so that everyone can see it and can experience it and can be uplifted by it, which is what each of you is doing or each of us is doing. Now to answer your question, the divine and your high self, and it was the divine kind of on the divine mother side um, uh, without form, wanted to let you know, since you asked, that Yes, you, you, you're, you're connected and you're getting this wonderful information coming in, but to be aware that not to let your low self get you caught up in, in some of the, um, the lower patterns. And it can happen without our knowing it. You know, those blind spots we talk about with Johari's windows and it just, those things that come up that we, we know about one aspect of it, but we don't know about the other and it comes up. And next thing we know, we'll find ourselves feeling a little perhaps melancholy and sometimes it's our own self again being released but sometimes like oh my goodness i opened myself up and didn't even know it so just wanted you to know it's not that you're doing it much but it, it can happen to you and um they're they're pleased that you're staying in the light and just to to if just being aware of that will allow less of it to happen the light will clear it out for you so basically it's a very positive positive feedback for you. Just wanted you to be aware of it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm sure everybody else relates also. Yeah. And I want you to know everyone that I talked to in, in spiritual circles, and I've been talking to all kinds of things. And some of you know, things that have come up and they, and they do. It's just what we do is we just let the light dissipate it flow with flow with the events of our lives. Don't get ca caught with the, the, with the lesser patterns, let them fall away and the light will the universe will take care of us. Sometimes it takes a little while, but it happens. And, um, and so I've had that happen too. So we have a class coming up, a seminar, an intuitive mastery seminar. We're so looking forward to it. Um, and it looked like for a little while it wasn't going to happen. But out of the blue, just as soon as we let it go and put it out there, the divine, the universe, and wonderful people um, brought it in. I'm going to talk about it during the intuitive mastery. So it's just, you know, that's what we are to do. All right. Um, with that, let me move on to 
Marcy, do you have anything to share, Marcy, or anything, a question, or both? Oh, boy. Well, um, I'm, hi, everybody. I love you guys so much. Like Pat was saying, it's so awesome when we get together. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of energy going through right now since we've been on the call, and I know you know, a lot of times it's baggage leaving. Yep. And I don't know if you can pick up on what this is right now, but um, it's, um, I mean, there's a lot of energy and a, and a lot of pressure in like the midsection. Yep. Is that, ju is that just baggage when that's um, all that pressure like that? Or is it something else? Or Oh my, no, it's a combination of things. It's actually some wonderful things. You've been energetically more open than you're probably aware. And you have these new connections being made through all the different octaves of your body. As we make connections up there, of course, we're one whole being. So different octave specific connections happen um, with our different bodies. And so that's happening. And as it's happening, it's facilitating this boy. And I, I don't even know what to call that stuff leaving. Uh, I'm glad it's leaving. Yeah. It's a good thing, but it's happening simultaneously. So you have these incoming intense energies coming in as stuff is coming out at the same time. And it seems to be flowing well, but it's kind of, um, there's a lot of current to it. If I were in the ocean, uh -huh. I would say there's a, there's a lot of current moving by. And I got to make sure I hold on to the rocks so I don't get, you know, swept down, <laughs> down the stream, so to speak. So it's a good thing, but it, 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 it's definitely you're ready for it and the different parts of your inner self are definitely encouraging it to happen, but it's happening at a pace that's appropriate. Um, as with all of us, I, part of you wants it to go quicker, but I'm going to let you know that I think this is about as quick as it's going to happen and as quick as it should happen. Um, to, you know, keeps everything in balance. So yeah. that's what's happening. It, it's, a, it's a good thing. Is this the kind of thing, like, you know, I've I've heard one lady say, this will be going on the rest of your life, you know, talking about these energies and that. Mm -hmm. I just don't believe that. I don't believe we're going to constantly be feeling this much pressure and intensity and, and uh, um, extreme up and down movements of this. Well, some people probably will just because that's what they've chosen as part of their life path. But to, in your is that what I've chosen? Yeah, I don't think so because what's happening is in, in we're accelerating this. I'm going to call it older stuff because I don't have another way of describing it. But the stuff that really heavier, I, I see it almost like like coal. It's that dense. It's really dense stuff that just being released and it's heavy and it's an intense and it's the lower vibrations. And so as it comes up, if we experience any of it, it can be kind of, um, uh, you can feel the lower vibrations, but no, what you're doing though, is you're cleaning house. So because what happens is we let go of this older stuff, our frequency can then rise higher. That is the whole part of what's happening with the whole soul group. We're being anchored up higher. And, and Edgar Casey talked about this and so did many others. And he didn't talk about it in that way, but we're, we're, we're moving up into this. And so the spectrum on which we operate, instead of being down here, as things get released, we're, we're moving up here. So we're always going to be processing energies. Yes, we're always going to be making new connections, but we're not always going to be doing it in this way with these lower vibrations. So does that make sense? The learning is yeah. ongoing for our whole life and and after this life, it just, it never ends, but it's not going to be these lower vibrations like you're having now. Oh, good. This is the house cleaning <laughs> for all of us. Yeah, this is, the, you know, but as much as we, we, we say, why we want all the stuff to be gone, then when it starts happening and I'll make up a number, 80% of it just falls away and we don't even know that it left at all until later when we just suddenly realize that we feel differently and maybe 20%, 5%, whatever the number is, it's hard to put a number on it, gets processed through our energy field. And we experience some of those old patterns, old emotions, old thoughts, whatever they are. But as long as we don't hold on to them, we bless them and let them go and let the light come in and fill that space all is well. And that's indeed what you're doing. In fact, that, that's what's happening with um, everyone we've talked to here. 
um, so far. Some of it's happening faster with some of you than with others, but it's happening with each of us at a um, pace that's appropriate. That keeps the clock work all synchronized up as best possible while it's happening. Um, and I was gonna mention something and then my guidance told me not to. So I will mention it another time. It's, it's a, it, it oh. has to do with this, but if things go too fast for us, I'm just gonna put it this way. If things go too fast, things get out of synchronicity and it, it's not a positive thing. So although yeah. we would like it to go faster, it's good that it happens at the pace that's appropriate for us and which is what is happening uh, with you. Okay. Do you have more to share or to ask? Oh, let's see. Hmm. Well, I'd like to think of something, but nothing's coming to me. Right now. I think you shared what you had to share. It. So I have to ask, I know it's a little off this topic, but how's the weather there right now? Well, right now it's perfect weather and it's calm and there's just a light breeze little puffy clouds mm -hmm. and this is supposed to be it's supposed to be the really intense hot dry month mm -hmm. and so far it's been amazing it's been perfect wow so, yeah it's incredible it's well, incredible sharing I, and i'm going to think of thank you even more when it's winter here and it's and it's sunny and bright there so yeah yeah for sure and I guess maybe I'll still be here because I'm not getting any clue to go anywhere different. So. Yeah, just so I, you... As far, go ahead. Yeah, as far, well, as far as I see, I just keep I just keep getting stay the course, stay the course. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as you said that, and I didn't mean to interrupt there, um, you, you have a... a, a a divergence coming up in your in your path you have actually a couple of minor ones but this is a pretty significant one and i think you'll be naturally guided as to what you're going to do i'm not sure if it has to do with moving or staying or something else but it's a significant one coming up and your higher guidance wants you to be aware of it okay yeah and it's coming up right. um, looks like november ish as it, it's hard to tell time on these things but it's what it looks like perhaps mid to late November, early December. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing uh, where I sometimes I get a little, well, you know, from, from the true perspective, it's just a um, one moment at a time kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the, but the heartfelt part to go see kids, to go see the family, that kind of thing, you know, keeps coming in and it has throughout the whole time. It, but I still keep getting notes to stay the course, stay the course, you know, and then the mind will say, oh, but your heart will be so open when you go and do these other things. And anyway. You're part of right now, and we've talked about it, at least I think we have, uh, this, this whole period that you're in Hawaii is just part of this longer chapter with all little sub chapters and things that, you know, they're all dovetail into one another. And you're right. You're, you're doing the longer, let's call it the longer spiritual game right now. And that's the low self trying to get you sidetracked. Um, and and yeah. you're wise that you're staying the course. And when the time is to go, you'll start getting the indicators and then you'll start, you won't, I don't think it'll be a big surprise. You'll, you'll know okay. that, that, it, that you've been prompted and when the time is right. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, thank you so much. Well, you're welcome, and thank you for sharing from beautiful Hawaii, Molokai. Mm -hmm. All right, Greg, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. Sorry I got in late. I was having technical difficulties with a new notebook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and just as an, an aside, I got a Zoom email not too long ago. They said if for those who haven't done so after a certain date, and I don't recall the date right now at this moment, that um, you have to have the new client to use Zoom. So it, it may make you do it, but if it doesn't, if you have a problem, you may have to download the new one. So if that happens next time, that's, that's probably going to be it. So do you have anything to share or any questions? Well, oh. Yeah, I do. And it, 
I guess isn't surprising that it's along a similar theme that everybody else has discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm continuing to have these dreams that seem to be life altering events, I guess. And uh, if I could summarize the last dream, I, I believe I know what the major theme of the dream was, but I'm always wondering whether I've missed something because they seem to be many layers. But uh, essentially, I, in the dream, had inherited a legacy from people that were seminal in my life mm -hmm. and that helped me form my ethical values and perspectives and notions of morality and all that, you know, my perspectives. And in the dream, I felt like I was going to quite literally maintain the, the house that I had inherited. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to live in it. I was going to build my own apartment over the garage. <laughs> so, but when I went into the house, uh, discovered that the people that I thought had died and that I inherited from actually hadn't died mm -hmm. and that there was someone else that was their heir. And it was quite shocking at first. And, and then in thinking about it, I realized, oh, well, I guess I've been operating under kind of a burden, a notion that I had a responsibility to carry on what I felt was significant that these people had shown me in their examples of their life mm -hmm. and and recognize no that isn't what my obligation or my purpose is in this life that it's to forge my own paradigm and my own uh foundation and that i can accept what i want to of of, of those or what is appropriate but i'm not responsible for maintaining and passing on their specific legacy and that was real uh it wasn't um it wasn't at all disturbing it was just like kind of eye-opening i didn't realize that i had been so tethered by their mm -hmm. examples and i'm a little uh perplexed in that i don't know what to do other than what i'm already doing to form my own foundation <laughs> But that, that, that's the main message I get, is it's not my responsibility to carry on their legacies. Okay. Let me first ask a question that your high self wanted me to relay to you. What do you feel, what do you sense these dreams, this pattern of having these dreams, these very vivid, sometimes lucid dreams, what does that mean to you? What do you think is happening? Well, I do think it's a, transitioning it i don't particularly like the term baggage but it is a tether i'm releasing or tethers are being released that tethered me to previous ways of interacting and regarding the world our our life and it's freeing up the possibility to reestablish different kind of like aqua courts i can reestablish tethers in ways that feel appropriate to me I, I'm not utilizing ones that were established for me by potentially other people or previous interactions, but I get to choose new ways of looking at things. Yes, you right now are in a period, and we, I, I don't know if we talked about it in quite these terms before in our phone calls. You're doing some deep inner work right now. Lots of deep inner work is happening at all different levels. And it's a combination of like your acid cords or energetic cords, as you sometimes call them, because they energy cords connect internally, externally, and they can connect to things, ideas, thoughts, beliefs, they can connect to things. And you're at a period of major reevaluation, and you could call it house cleaning, but it's at all levels of everything that was there before. You have these these patterns that have been forming for some time and now it's they're kind of complete and they're super they're coming in and superimposing or superseding that which once was so the old is being swept away and what you thought was way that what something was isn't the way that it is and you're reevaluating and you're reconnecting to these patterns that have been been developing and growing and un, like i say developing distilling and um being refined in the background of your being for quite some time and at different levels 
And now they're coming into place to be part of your active interaction inwardly, outwardly, and at many levels. So this is pretty profound work that's happening right now. You've chosen it and you're doing it in this way because it really allows lots of work to happen without the mind and the low self um, wanting to put things in boxes and you know try to manipulate things. You're just doing it in a way that works for you. And it's really, I want to use again the word profound, deep, significant, and pervasive. It's all of those things all at once. Yeah, and I'm very appreciative that it's occurring the way it is because it's not dramatic. It's just very, you know, like, kind of in my face undeniable and I end up always being very grateful for it and appreciate it and I get the feeling that um whatever the new is that will take greater form has so much more possibility than I ever would have been aware of or allowed myself to consider and I'm really anxious to see how that manifests that is indeed happening you're just like the older patterns of this baggage of order, as I have lack of a better word, the energetic attachments, old belief systems, the old patterns are being released in favor of the new higher patterns of our being. So with you are the corresponding higher order processes that, again, they've been forming all this time. And now you're ready to release the rest of this. It's, it's appropriate. It's, it's, it's uh, at a point where it can happen smoothly and transition well and it without rocking the boat and allowing these higher patterns to come in. And of course, there are higher frequency beliefs and higher frequency, frequency patterns tied more to your higher nature, your high self. And of course, they're going to manifest in, in, in with new possibilities that you couldn't even have imagined before in an unseen ways, as June used to say, that and unexpected and unseen ways that are just such a blessing. And that I truly believe is what is happening with you now. It, it feels that way. I guess I can answer the, my own next question, but because of the transition, we all often want to feel like we need to do something or, you know, I need to pursue a certain perspective or something. And I can ask if there's some, some direction I should be looking in, but the answer I get is, just let it happen. It's happening the way it should, and it'll become clear, more clear in the appropriate time. Yes, that's exactly it. You are organically, as we all do, we, we naturally let things fall away. New connections are made, and we sometimes are guided to, to facilitate that process to make it a little quicker, you know, to clear out the stuffed closet routine, as I often refer to it. But you are organically, spiritually, energetically and all, all the different bodies are processing, letting the old fall away. The new connections are just naturally forming. It's just happening again, spiritually hyphen organically. And yes, your answer to your question, you are indeed just continue the process. And as things are to become clear to you, they will. Okay, great. Well, it is interesting. We're all doing similar things, aren't we? <laughs> it is. It's happening to everyone. It's just I, I, want, I don't use the word lightly. It's a glorious time we're in. I really believe this is the time that Edgar Casey talked about and other spiritual ones, June, Dr. McKimmy, the healer, um, all, and, doc, and people don't know him, Peter Navarro, Peter knew about the, this time. We're in this spiritual renaissance where all these high frequency energies are coming in. It's almost like, it's kind of like Atlantean times. And it's for us to take advantage of it. And we can choose to, to ride the crest of that wave, connect with things, flow with it as best we can. Yeah, there's always going to be some bumps in the road because we live in a physical world and unexpected things can happen. But if we flow with them, stay in the light and, and not let ourselves get connected to, attached to old patterns and just let them flow away as best we can, such growth is possible now that hasn't been possible in decades and centuries past. We can do more sometimes in a weekend than we did in 10 years, just, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, it's accelerated that much. At the same time, when things are this fast, as I wrote in the last post, with rapid evolution comes rapid change. And um, at the physical level, historically speaking, that's always been a bumpy path, whether that be the original Renaissance, you know, the third, late 1300s, 1400s, and so on, the industrial revolution, or even in the, the 1900s with all the social evolution that happened throughout the world in the United States. 
um, because it's always a mix of people and a mix of, of different spiritual levels of evolution that are happening. And as it, all these things interact, you're going to have a mixed reaction, but it's for all of us to stay centered again in our high self, as we all know that we, I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir on this, but to stay centered, stay in our bubble, do as we're guided. Um, and then, um, and by remaining that way, remaining the light connected, we can make more of a change than we can than if we try to get caught into these lower patterns and try to do it that way. Um, so, and I know that's what we're, what we're all doing. And it, I just, this is such a, a wondrous time to be in, um, but also outwardly, as we can see, it's intense and can be tumultuous, but we are to, we are to keep ourselves set apart and, and to, to follow our own path and not get caught up in other people's stuff. That's one of those Buddhist teachings. Don't take on someone else's karma. And it's a good lesson to remind ourselves of that we are to just do as we're guided. And sometimes the highest good is where we just are the light. Sometimes we are to get involved, but oftentimes um, that's the higher path is to do, is the detachment and to stay in the light. And then when we are guided or some situation comes about, about we can do it from the higher level, the higher pattern and not um, the lesser one, so. Well, and it, it really struck me in your recent message that um, as often we feel out of place or that times are tumultuous, this is the time we chose to come and we chose to come for the very specific benefits of coming at this time. And just reading that made me feel much more comfortable about, all right, <laughs> this is meant to be. <laughs> it is. We did come at this time. And what is that they some people say it's a it's a uh, i don't know if it's a asian or oriental proverb or some say it's a curse but may you live in interesting times <laughs> well when you live in interesting times interesting things are happening and so and everyone's going to handle those events differently and but again we are to be the way showers we are to be the the, the connection of the light the, the vehicles of the light and the, um, and the instruments of the light and when we do that we do the highest good possible than in any other way that we could. And that's the beauty of that I feel like everyone here is doing and, and beyond just all this wonderful light work that's happening in the world um, truly is making transformation that wouldn't be possible if we tried it doing other ways, more traditional ways. So thank you for sharing that. And for, yeah, thank you. Does anyone else have anything? I can go around again so we don't all jump in at once. Lisa or Aaron? You can speak to <laughs> Esther. Esther, she can speak to. Okay. Um, I don't know that I have a question. It's certainly like you've been saying some interesting, interesting times. And uh, in the beginning of 2020, I went through a lot of frustrations, like I'm sure everybody did. Um, but then surrender happened and <laughs> and from there um i feel like everything has just gotten so easy and uh i feel very blessed and it's almost it's almost like the less i do the better it is and uh um i'll even just put out a in my mind or whatever uh, some sort of a thought of how do I find out about this and the next thing I know within hours or a day someone is calling me and giving me exactly what I was questioning it is all happening so fast and it's perfect I I don't know what to say about that I mean it's just uh, it's surrender I guess and accepting and it works beautifully. I am so glad you mentioned surrender. I actually reread that chapter yesterday or day before in June's book, the one that we used to go about during the intuitive mastery seminars. And the whole theme of that is, is that surrender is, is allowing the high self and the divine 
to guide our lives. And it's the low self is letting itself be under the guidance of the high self. And when we do that, as she says, we can learn things the hard way, doing it through the low self, pure, purely with the left brain and the lower mind. And we kind of bump into walls and rocks and stumble and all kinds of things. Or we can do it the easy way and allow ourselves to be guided. And that's what surrender does. We just Most people do it when they're at the end of their rope. But for however we do it, whether we do it voluntarily or just through because of sequence of events, by doing so, we are put ourselves under the patterns of the high self and things just flow effortlessly or more effortlessly, as you said. Isn't it wonderful? Just serendipity, coincidences, good fortune, out of the blue, things that you could have never possibly expect to happen yes. suddenly yes. manifest yes. out of the blue. Yes. Yeah, I know you're, you know, you know, it's happening. I can see it. They're showing it to me. It's like, wow. Why did, why was I doing I mean, it? The humor oh. in everything, literally. Yeah. Yes. All the, the things that seem, I don't know, chaotic or whatever, I find even humorous right now, which I, I don't know what to say about that, but that's how I'm looking at it. <laughs> well, you're just living in the blessings of the divine. You're allowing yourself to be guided from the divine, your high self, which knows the patterns that knows all the things that we can't possibly see at this level. And this, you know, that invisible hand will guide us and bring the other forces and energies and people and circumstances into our life that are for our highest good. It doesn't mean that challenges won't happen, but when they do happen, so the solutions come with them. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And so thank you so much. What a blessing to share that. Thank you so much for sharing that because that is one of the big lessons in all spiritual esoteric teachings is surrender. That is one of those things that they all teach. And it's easy to say is quite another thing to do. And but when it starts happening over and over again, you can't help but accept it and go, yes, yes. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yes, and, and the one thing I just, well, I'm going to caveat it because our low self, because we've got these habituated patterns that are that we've had over the last centuries and we don't have to hold on to them. We can let them dissolve and fall away. But occasionally, if we're not paying attention, we can re, the low self can reassert itself and the high self will say, okay, you can have it back, you know. And, um, but all we have to do again is just give it back, put ourselves, just go take a moment to surrender it again and we're back into the, into the flow. So just thought I'd share that. There was a, there was a, um, a song and I'm not a big Ted Nugent fan, just so you know, but I'm going to quote some lyrics that he had from some song in the seventies. And they talked about this in sales school. When I was in the Navy, I was a recruiter for a while. And he, and he says, when you're trying to share something, share it and then just let it be. And, and, and there's a, and, and this ties to the lyrics. And I think this is definitely true of spiritual don't sell it and buy it back again. Mm. In other words, we gave it to the divine and the divine is guiding us. Let's just leave it there. Let's not grab it back and try to run this thing because it didn't work well the first time and it's probably not going to work well again. So if we let the higher guidance do it for us, blessings are abound. So thank you again. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Jeff. Great to see you. Good to see you. And I apologize for your name. You know, I had your name and then all of a sudden it blanked on me. And whenever they do that to me, there's some cosmic reason, but I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to mm. up it upon you. So thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything? Pat, do you have anything to share before we close? No, I just think that I'm, I'm just... Um... I'm just in awe of the flow once again between the people participating in this call. It's, it never ceases to amaze me. Every time we get together, um, we, we're all helping each other and each question and each answer that you present Jeff to one, uh, we all get to find something within that answer. And I'm just uh, really, very grateful for it and so thank you all for being here and um and uh surrendering and and uh, participating thank you well thank you and for the blessing and for but it, it's in sharing and letting us all bring things through 
because it's not only for us, it's for everyone. And we bless each other. So thank you. It, that's how I feel. It's a blessing um, having each person, each of you in, our, in, our, in my life and in, in, in each of us in each other's lives. So thank you. Paula, do you have anything to share or any last questions, thoughts? No, thank you so much. I'm just enjoying the energy and the voices. And Marcy, it's so good to hear your voice. I know. And thank you, each of you, because everything resonated so much with me tonight. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Greg, anything? Any last thoughts? Nope, I think I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And Marcy, do you have anything to share? Not that I'm envious uh, that you're in Hawaii and I'm not. <laughs> you know, you could be here if you wanted to bad enough, Jeff. <laughs> I know it, but you know what? They, they keep telling me, it, it just to let you know, when you say it's not time to leave, every time I think about going somewhere, and I do whimsically, if that does enter my mind, they say, no, you are where you are right now. Continue on. We'll let you know when it's time to go do something else. So do you have anything? Well, there, there's a great camping spot for you when you're ready. Right. <laughs> well, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, we'll think you about it. Um, I would just, with what Esther was talking about, you know, so many times we're talking about uh, what we need help with or what we want guidance or advice, but she's absolutely right. The flow and serendipity is amazing. It it's just beyond what we could imagine. It, it's just the little bumps in between. <laughs> so, aloha, everybody. I love you guys all. I'm so glad to hear you guys. Well, love to all of you. Thank you all for being here. Just blessings and light as always. Blessings, light, and love. And until next time. Oh, Lisa, do you have anything? Oh, I'm sorry. I Did I jump? To, thank you, Esther, for bringing it to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me get away with not getting some final thoughts from Lisa, please. Um, well, I didn't get a chance to ask the question. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, uh, I guess I'm just going to ask if there's anything from my higher self that she would like me to know. Well, right now, our last conversation Lots of, lots of things that we talked about that we know about were covered and a lot of energetic stuff came through during that conversation. Just you got directly and some of it you know, came through the, um, through the phone call that you're currently processing. And I think, you're aware, I think you sense that. that you're, you're sensing there's, oh, I wonder if there's something more I need to know. You're, you're getting it right now. It's, and it hasn't quite, some of it's beginning to crystallize. I can see that, but you're getting this whole, bunch of stuff and then i think it's going to kind of crystallize together because it's how it needs to happen and it is part of this next i don't even know how to say it. it's kind of a shift to one side but it's also a shift up for you in the unfoldment of your life both spiritually and i think at the physical level and i don't they're not they're keeping it veiled from my awareness of what that means uh it's, and when they do that i know that that's an indicator it's not for me to know it's for you to discover but that's what's happening right now with you Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I apologize for not allowing you to get the question earlier. I thought I, you'd had the chance, so I'm. It's okay. Yeah, so glad you asked. All right, is there anything else from anyone? Well, again, blessings, light, and love. Thank you all for being here. Invite your friends. We'll do this again next month. I'll put it out. And until then. Again, just may the just that the blessings of the divine be upon you and just be open and ride the crest of that wave and stay in the light. You can just know uh, that the, the light you are is the light you are sharing with the world and it desperately needs it. So until next time, blessings, light, and love. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Thank you.